you and I were both front and center at uh, this amazing uh, announcement. I think maybe there were 10, 15 analysts and maybe 50 press, uh, a very um, hard event uh, to get into. And two more insights and strategy folks were there on site. Yeah, great event, really um, very exciting. And I was very honored to be there. Um, got to meet the CEO of Microsoft, which my kids thought was very cool. Heck yeah, um, you did. Handshake. I that was very cool too. I'm not trying to be clear yes. about that. I thought it was very cool. My, my kids He's thought one, so too. He is one of the hardest CEOs to get time with. So yeah, that was good. Yeah. I mean, I want to go through kind of all of, all of what happened. There was a lot of announcements, um, but one of those, one of the things that I think is really important to talk about is that, that he is a hard CEO to get time with. And he sat down with us and talked to us about strategy, talked to us about, you know, just everything that's changing in AI, how quickly things have changed since the last, since the first time he got on stage and talked, you were there in, in Washington when he first got on stage and talked about Bing chat. And at the time, when I look back at the things that we talked about and the things that we wrote back then, the way that we talked about large language models, the way that we talked about any sort of generative AI was almost like we were explaining it to a child when you look back at it, because it was so new for everybody. And now it's so common and Microsoft is actually just making it more common and more accessible to everybody with a lot of these announcements. So. It was everything. I mean, it was Windows 11 update with Copilot in Windows. There were some device updates or new devices. I mean, it, it was it was kind of not all over the place in terms of scatter, but it was all over the place. You know, from updates to new things, new devices, new new products in within products. So, I think the big standouts for me, if we're talking about just modern work, were of all of the things that are available in the Windows 11 update. Um, there's a lot of things for creativity, paint, photo, snipping tools, things that kind of give it like almost a, an Adobe Light-like functionality. I think that's a fair characteristic, yeah. And I think it's really important to note that there's a huge creator economy out there right now. People are making a lot of money as a side hustle, making a lot of money as their main job. We're not talking about just marketing teams. We're talking about people who are creators on you know, social media and various platforms, e-commerce platforms, that it's a, you know, very large industry and they're making these tools that make things like putting, create or putting images into just a Word document make with a chat in, in, a, in a chat box, makes that so much easier. Imagine like not being, you know, when you're trying to create an image and having to, you know, and not, it, not everybody can use Adobe Illustrator. Not everybody has you know, access to all of these images. And you can just say, like, create an image for this. And it reads into the content of your document and creates an image that will match up with that document. So there's a lot of things for creators. Um, and then I think the other really important thing was just this concept of one copilot. So yes. first, we have to talk about copilots. And everybody says copilot. I like to say Microsoft has the capital C copilot. They do have a little bit of a branding issue here because everybody has since, you know, they can't trademark that. But every company now uses the term copilot because it is a really great way to talk about how an AI assistant is going to help you because it's not auto autopilot, it's a copilot. But the capital C copilot, when we're talking about Microsoft, rather than having a copilot for Word and a, a copilot for, for every single app and that you have, Basically, it's now a copilot across all of your Microsoft 365, all of your apps, all of and devices, so that that copilot kind of gets to know you. So much so that in Outlook, copilot can now write an email in your voice. <laughs> right. Which I think that's just the start of it. So that you know, what is it called? It has a, there's a name like in my sound like me. It's in my yeah, like sound me. like me, right? And they're starting with that in Outlook. But when you think about that, this is a really powerful thing because if you've ever used any of these, like where, you know, almost ever, most tools now have it where it's like suggest a reply. Well, they're horrible. They are, everybody thinks AI is so smart. It's really not. 
and it doesn't sound like you. And you, I find if I ever try that, I will spend more time making it sound like me than I would just writing an email to begin with because it's so robotic. It's like if you were to send me an email like, hey, we have a podcast this afternoon, it would, buy, it would respond like, thank you, Patrick, for your kind email reminding me of our meeting this afternoon. I, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't sound like you. So the fact that they've figured out a way to pick up on your tone and even sign it the way that you would sign an email, we're starting with Outlook, but that means it can now, it will be able to write documents in your tone. I mean, there's, there's I think, some a lot of power in that. I'm excited about that. So business chat, which was announced in March, is now Microsoft 365 chat. That's, I mean, there's so, like, I don't know where, where to start. And then I think another really great thing is they're starting to, to, to test a consumer version. So a lot of this, the, the chat bot and Copilot is aimed at business and enterprise customers. It's $30 per user per month on top of your Microsoft 365 subscription. But now they're starting to test a consumer version. So that means it's really going to be in the hands of everybody. So productivity for life, it's not just like for one, you know, kind of zone in, in work or whatever. It's across the web, it's across your apps, it's across your work data. It's, and, it, and it's going to get to know you. It's a little creepy in a good so, way. Yes. So technically, there's more than one co-pilot. Just to put it out there, the, the key here is it's a singular experience that yes. if you're using uh Copilot for consumer that's called Copilot mm -hmm. uh, is going to be a similar experience to M365 Copilot. The data sets are not blended, okay? And that's by design to keep uh, corporate information separated from personal information in a very similar way that corporations uh, firewall employees' phones. So mm -hmm. technically, uh, it is more than one Copilot, but the experience is, is the same. And that's important. At some point, maybe, probably not, uh, the data sets will cross each other, but there is going to be a different copilot for uh, Dynamics 365 applications, okay, that, that uh, where it's more CRM focused, but the experience will be the same. And, and that's the key here. Um, the biggest thing for me is this being integrated into Windows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can't, I mean, there are not 2 billion but almost 2 billion active users on, on, on Windows. When you add Microsoft 365, you get, I think, to 2.5 billion. The, the scale is, is crazy. And this is where Microsoft is most unique, particularly on the, uh, on the business side and, and the productivity side. I, I do expect uh, Google to, you know, is probably the closest proximity to this, with their strength being primarily on the on the consumer side, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously with uh, with Workspace, which uh, you know uh, we use back and forth with Microsoft 365, is is going to be uh, a, a real player. The other thing that uh, really struck me is their ability to pull in smartphone information. You know, I've been on Windows, and sure, I play around with Macs, but. Uh, there's a program uh, inside, I think it's called Your Phone now. It's had three different names, My Phone, Your Phone, maybe it's just called Phone, that will pull in text and iMessages. And uh, I, so this is something I use every day in Microsoft, starting Windows Photos, which is uh, pull in everything that I took from my iPhone. So then about 15 seconds of taking a picture on my iPhone, it just shows up like it does on a Mac. But this is going cross-platform, and I think that's very powerful and something that everybody needs to keep uh, their eyes on, that, that to have full context and the best context, you need data from pretty much everywhere. Uh, final comment uh, that I'll make is on where this AI actually takes place. Now, in the end, consumers don't care where it's taking place unless they don't have to pay more for it. Um, and whether it's coming off the device or whether it's coming out of the cloud, uh, maybe with the exception that, you know, you don't always have very good connectivity, which is why we're still not painting interfaces in the cloud that Sun Microsystems had thought about with the NC device. 
um, mm -hmm. that that just never ended up happening because the robustness of what was happening on the endpoint. It's the reason why we have software on an iPhone, right? It, you could paint the interface with the network, right? But it's just too slow and it costs too much money. It's not not a good experience. So. Uh, when Microsoft uh, alluded to, and I'll say the breadcrumbs was running these workloads locally, right? We saw the um, uh, high-end uh, Surface Laptop Studio 2 uh, running uh, LLMs uh, locally, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's using a discrete NPU uh, from Intel that, that ne the next generation of Intel products will be integrated inside the device itself so getting a, a much uh, much lower uh, power but you know they flirted this uh, with idea um, and an interview that I did on the six five uh, really the six five uh, yeah, with the CTO five. there talked about um, this notion of hybrid compute where the compute happens mm -hmm. in the best place uh, according to the user but Great event, so much to talk about. Looking forward uh, to your write-ups, and I'm probably going to write something up uh, as well.